to catch up on here. So uh, it's technically day 29, but I figure I'll do the day 26 wrap since I didn't uh, do it then. So back behind me, you can see the Haska teepee. Uh, at the end of day 26, I ended up there and I had a burger and a couple beers, which was awesome. And then uh, Katie picked me up and swept me back to Livingston for the weekend. So over the past two days, uh, it's been quite a blur, quite a transition going from doing this every day to going to a wedding and being a part of that whole deal. So uh, fun weekend though, it was good to be back in town. It was very comfortable. Uh, it's kind of difficult to get back out on the trail, but that's just the way that it goes. But I'm back out here and I'm hitting the trail day 29 and more to come. Good afternoon and welcome to day number 29. So after two days of rest, I uh, just got driven back to Pahaska Teepee from Livingston by a friend. Uh, thank you very much, Jim, appreciate it. Um, and I'm back on the trail and starting section number four. So final section of the GYE. Um, this section right now will be a four day stretch from Pahaska to Cook City along the Yellowstone National Park boundary because I can't uh, go into the park because of the flooding. Uh, I had some permits in the park, but that was uh, those permits were canceled because of the flooding. So I'll be following the boundary for the next day for the next three days, uh, get to Cook City on the fourth day. And um, from there, it's just nine days to get home. So welcome to section number four. Good evening, just wrapping up day number 29. Um, complicated day, I would say. Uh, after two days off um, and actually being home and the comforts of home of everything, uh, mentally, man, it is tough to be out back out here. Um, hopefully I get back in the groove, It'll probably take a day or two, but um, today just really hard to be uh, into it after being home and just uh, so close to all those comforts. So uh, mentally very difficult. Physically, it was really easy. I planned an easy day. I only went like six and a half miles today uh, up the North Fork of the Shoshone River. And um, I'm camped not too far from Red Creek, which is where a big climb starts tomorrow uh, to get up on the ridge and follow the eastern boundary of Yellowstone National Park. So that stretch is exciting, but it's also lots of uncertainty. So um, I'll probably feel better tomorrow when I get up there and I can look around and kind of see what's going on and what it's like. Uh, there might be some water challenges, so uh, I'll uh, bring some extra water up with me in the morning when I depart from Red Creek. Uh, but I think the scenery is going to be spectacular up there. Uh, and hopefully I sleep good tonight and I can find, find my groove again tomorrow. Um, this is a short stretch though. I mean, tomorrow's day number two and uh, it's only four days from here to Cook City. But um, yeah, hopefully I can, you know, get back into this trip and, and uh, put all the comforts of town behind me for a little while because I still got 13 days left. So um, other than that, I got to camp early because it was only six miles. So I relaxed in the tent and um, I had new shoes. So it was nice to not do a bunch of mileage on the new shoes to break them in a little bit. Uh, my first pair was pretty much... Uh, garbage at 350 miles so i uh, bought some new shoes when i was in town um, made some other gear changes too while i was in town i swapped out to a bear canister so i've got a bear canister with me now and probably for the rest of the trip um, i'm expecting uh, several nights where i'm kind of up above tree line or in areas where you got those alpine trees that are just kind of stunted by the weather and elevation so bear hangs might be difficult so my bear canister with me and uh, I also noticed that uh, 
I carried a horseshoe for like 20 miles. I forgot I had it in my backpack. I just thrown it in there for some reason and I didn't take it out. So uh, found that today. So I carried a horseshoe for no reason for 20 miles. I was gonna bring it home, but I forgot to take it out when I was home. So, oh well. Um, other than that, things are good. I'm hoping to sleep well tonight and uh, enjoy this section of the Northern Absorca Wilderness, which is part of Shoshone National Forest. Good morning and welcome to day number 30. 30 days, awesome. Uh, so far for the trip, I have done 355 miles. The plan for today is to do a lot of climbing in the morning and then a lot of climbing in the middle of the day and a lot of climbing in the afternoon. So the first thing I'm going to do today is climb up Red Creek uh, to join the ridge so that I can follow the eastern boundary line of Yellowstone National Park which I'll be following really for the next three days until I get to uh, Republic Pass and drop down into Cook City. So uh, it's the first day up there. Um, don't really know what to expect, uh, but I'm going to carry some extra water up there, try to do 15 or 16 miles, and uh, there's a couple places where I, can, where I can drop off and get water. So uh, that's the plan, and uh, I think the scenery is going to be top notch. All right, moving along here. Um, the trail's pretty much dissipated at this point, which is what I expected. It kind of dead ended on the map. Um, getting towards the top of Red Creek and probably a little bit less than a mile from the boundary for Yellowstone National Park. When I hit the boundary is when I'll do a big climb up to the ridge or bigger climb. I've been climbing all morning, but do a big climb up to the ridge and then start heading up to uh, up and over Lamar Mountain. And I think once I get up to the ridge, it's gonna be a little bit more easy going. It's still gonna be up and down, but from what I can see up there, it looks kind of wide open. And uh, hopefully I can make some miles when I head up there, because I'd like to get to boot jack gap by the end of the day which will be about 17 miles so things are coming along it's pretty up here still lots of burn area everywhere but it is pretty up here big mountains just spotted a herd of elk out here uh, they haven't winded me yet the wind is at my face so i expect they'll notice me any minute and just book out of here but it's First actual elk herd I've seen. I've seen some lone bulls, but no elk herd. It's pretty cool. They're uh, starting to get agitated. They noticed me. I was trying to skirt around them, but that's gonna work. Yeah, they're taking off now. Sorry, guys. about 30 of them. Some calves, one bull, lots of cows. Pretty cool.
uh, up here on the ridge contemplating my choices. I got up to the ridge and I got probably about a mile, really didn't get that far. I'm not even to Lamar Peak yet. And uh, as far as I can tell, it's totally cliffed out. Um, maybe if there was, maybe if I wasn't alone and uh, there was some, somebody else kind of looking for routes and stuff, there'd be a way, but from as far as I can tell, I looked at two or three different options and uh, they're all just real loose rocks, steep, and not something I'm willing to uh, risk right now out here by myself. So kind of sitting here wondering what's next. Um, my first thought is to just book it back down the way I've come today. Um, just retrace the eight or nine miles that I've done today. And um, there's a, I think it's the trail that it was previously on before I turned up Red Creek. I could follow that trail kind of around the ridge line that I'm on and then come back up on the other side of this uh, cliff spot, cliffed out spot that I can't get by. Um, that I think is plan A at this point. Um, I'm just going to have a snack and drink some water and um, try to, you know, make a, make a smart decision, not react too much, but I think that's probably the way I'm going to need to go. I, I'll have to look at the mileage and kind of figure out how that changes my route to Cook City or if it changes my route to Cook City, but uh, it's, a, it's a big detour. So uh, that's where things stand right now, and uh, I'll keep you posted once I get moving. Well, good news. Um, I think I found a way down. I'm most of the way down, I had to drop quite a bit of elevation, so I have to climb back up over this ridge here. But uh, it's been slow going. It's been a couple hours getting through all that shit up there. There was a big cairn up top that kind of cued me into a possible way down. So I've been picking my way, to, my way through that crap for the last hour or so. And uh, it'll be probably a two hour delay, but I'll take a two hour delay over a full day delay like I was thinking I was gonna have. But this stuff is super, super loose. So it's just like slipping and sliding and falling everywhere. So taking my time, I gotta drop maybe another 100 or 200 feet. And then I can take one of these little ribs back up to the ridge and uh, be back in progress land. So uh, I feel like shit right now, but honestly, I feel pretty good that I'm not having to backtrack the nine miles I did this morning. So uh, I'll take it. Well, a couple hour, I don't even know what I want to call that. Scramble sesh, slip a dude ah. It was like ball bearings. Uh, dropped way down, climbed up, took my first digger of the trip, slid and uh, some ball bearings. I haven't cleaned it up yet, so it looks worse than it is, but got myself pretty good on the leg, on the hand, and on my tissue too, but. I'm gonna clean that up when I decide to camp here. I, the ridge has had actually some really good places to camp along the way, but it's only five, so I'll probably push for at least another hour. Uh, kind of way behind schedule from where I wanted to be, but still thankful that I have to go all the way back because of that uh, cliffed out section. So um, yeah, water will be an issue probably tonight. Um, uh, when I took that digger, I was sliding on my ass for a little while, and uh, I had two liters in my water bladder in the pouch of my backpack in the very back, and fucking punctured a hole in the bladder when I slid. So uh, I did catch it, and I still have some of that water, but um, it was actually kind of traumatic because I was like, ah, oh, damn, I definitely slid on my ass. I definitely got some cuts on my ass, and I'm like taking my backpack off and sorting things out and all of a sudden I feel like this gushing what I thought was blood going down the backs of my legs and I was like oh shit this is going to be way worse than a little scratch but uh, it was just the water just oozing out of my bladder down the backs of my legs so 
just minor scratches. I'll get them cleaned up. Um, and I don't know. I, tomorrow's a new day, man. I'm kind of looking forward to it. But a couple more miles before we get to camp. All right, uh, just wrapping up day number 30 and uh, happy to be wrapping it up. What a day. It was just chock-a-block full of challenges. Um, going to be pretty interesting to see how this uh, Yellowstone National Park boundary stretch goes. The first day, if it's telling at all, man, it is going to be a struggle. Uh, planned on doing 17. I made it just under 11 today, so crushing the miles. Uh, tons of climbing, you know, started this morning off with 3,500 foot climb. Um, tons of up and down once we're up here. And uh, I had heard that it was pretty straightforward to do this stretch to um, Boot Jack Gap, which is where I was planning on camping tonight. And uh, man, when I ran in, when I got cliffed out, it just kind of changed everything. But Thankfully, I didn't have to totally abort this stretch, um, I'll say yet, uh, and I was able to, over two and a half hours, work my way down through those cliffs and then back up to the ridge, and by that time I was just totally cached. Um, that's when I took a little digger. I was just uh, kind of side hilling along, and there's just like all this little tiny gravel, and it was soft at first so you could get purchase. And then it was like hard with gravel on top and I took a step onto that and just slid down the hillside. A ways, probably, probably 15 or 20 feet. Um, I keep looking around and assessing the damage and seeing like more and more just little random things. Uh, tripod was a lot like bent sideways but not broken, which is good. Got a huge tear in one of the waist belt um, on, on my backpack. The left one is torn like four or five inches, so. That sucks because it's my favorite backpack. Um, and then me personally, um, I did a little triage when I got to camp here. The worst one actually is my finger just because I like ripped a chunk right off the tip and it's just a spot where you're like constant, you know, you use it so often. Um, but I got cleaned up with wet wipes and scrubbed the road rash and tried to get all that grit out of there and put some Neosporin on it. And uh, things are okay, you know, hate, hate the idea of being all bloodied up in bear country, but what can you do? I got Neosporin. Um, I covered the one on my leg just so that it can heal overnight, but tomorrow I'll probably take that wrap off just to let it get some air. And uh, the ones on my butt cheeks feel okay, but I bet, I bet, uh, I bet I'm pretty, pretty bruised up back there. Um, so what a day. Um, I'm camped on the Yellowstone boundary, like feet from the Yellowstone sign. It's hard to tell in this, but this is just like a huge cliff down here. My tent's back over this way, kind of next to the same cliff. Uh, beautiful views. Tomorrow, um, we'll play the water game. I've got two and a half liters for, to get me to where I, wherever I'm going. So it probably means I'm gonna have to jump off the ridge as soon as I have an opportunity to go gather some water before I get back up on the ridge. So see how that goes, but um, hopefully I rest up, get a good meal in me, and uh, tomorrow will be different than today was. I guarantee it. All right, see you tomorrow.